Civilization style games have a long history, mostly in the video game side of our hobby, but there are more than a few examples of attempting to build a tabletop experience that embraces the epic nature of a topic so expansive as to truly earn the descriptor. We're featuring the newest entry in the genre today, our provided preview copy of Mosaic coming to us from longtime friends of the channel Forbidden Games. We've reviewed nearly all of Forbidden's games in the past, and two of them have made our best of year-end lists. Is Mosaic bound for a place in gaming history? Let's take a look at it on our table and find out. We've skipped our unboxing and went straight to the table on this one. First of all, because my box, sitting here on the floor now beside me, is just a big empty container. Secondly, because as you can see, I barely have enough room for this game on our demo table, let alone to open up the box and show you all the components one at a time. So let's address this right off the bat before I get into gameplay. Mosaic is a beast. The board itself is absolutely massive, and these player boards that I have are chock-a-block with tracking and tokens. Forbidden has addressed this in their updates and are already at work making this fit your table better, so while that may help you, future viewers, what I have right now is what I'm going to use, so bear with me. Setup for Mosaic involves a lot of shuffling, both cards and tokens. The former needed to have the endgame cards shuffled towards the bottom of their decks, and the latter needed to be randomized face down, scattered about, revealed, and then blank filler tokens removed. Overall, this does a great job of mimicking the random resource scattering that's a calling card of the genre, but it sure is fiddly to do, especially by yourself when your collaborators are just off camera and casually refuse to help you. That being said, heavy board gamers are used to this and it's not anything overly egregious. Taking a quick tour around our table, we have a map of Southern Europe and the Middle East divided into hexes and cordoned off based on player count. In our three player game, we won't be visiting Hispania today. The port, treasure, and trade goods tiles have been shuffled and laid out, creating the rewards for settling these areas. Around the outside of the map, we have our decks of technology, build, population cards, and tax and tariff cards, each of which contain a single empire scoring card hidden somewhere towards the bottom. Unearthing three of these cards signals the end of the game. We've also got various wonder, civilization, government, and golden age tiles available for claiming as the game progresses. Before gameplay begins, <clears throat> each player chooses a starting hex for their first city on the board, taking the treasure or good tile on that space. While it's possible to claim a hex that has neither a treasure nor a good, why would you do that? From there, each player chooses a leader who will grant them a special power or bonus, and then each player will draft their five starting technologies. Choose one from your initial hand of five and pass the rest. Continue this until you've chosen five total. On your turn, you're going to take one of eight possible actions in an attempt to earn as many points as possible. Scoring takes place three times throughout the game and then once more at the end. When choosing an action reveals an empire scoring card from a deck, at least two players are going to score points based on majority influence in a region. You'll get two influence for every city and wonder you own in a region and one influence for each military unit. These can be augmented by earned bonuses or technologies as well. If you have the most influence in a region, you'll gain three victory points and an additional point Point for every city and wonder in the region. Not that you own, just that exists there. That part's important. If you have the second most influence, you'll net a very simple and far fewer two victory points. Three shall be the number of times you do this, and the number of times you do this shall be three. Once three, being the third number, be reached, you will finish the current round and then play one more round. When that round ends, each player scores points for all the cities, towns, wonders, and other various point orders you've accumulated throughout the ages. Highest score at the end? Well, they would win, wouldn't they? But how, Nicholas, do we get all these wonderful tiles in 3D printed models? By performing actions, fellow civilizers. On your turn, you'll perform one simple action, then pass the turn to the next player. That's it. That's literally the whole game. It's such a shockingly simple rubric that I literally had to comb through my rulebook a few times to make sure I wasn't missing something. There's no end of round activity. No, if you have 10 of these, then you do this other thing nonsense. You take one action, then you wait for everyone else to take their action. Now, granted, there are eight actions to choose from, and I won't go through them all individually, but they're almost always dead simple. Pay five ideas, take a face-up technology from the row. Build it if your tableau has the required resources. Build something, pay its cost, and then build it. If it's a city, build it anywhere. If it's a town, it goes next to one of your existing cities. Need more people? Choose a population card. Pay the cost, boom, more people. Far simpler than in real life. The how and the why taken care of, let's talk about whether or not the game works. In order to provide some context for my thoughts, let's talk us for a second about game weight. 
Sim games as a whole tend to fit solidly in the heavy game category. As I've admitted before, GLHF Board Games doesn't review a whole lot of heavy games. Mostly this is due to my particular gaming group not enjoying those games as much, and it's hard to review a game I can't get to the table. Looking at Mosaic on the table and seeing the stacks of cards, tokens, 3D printed minis, you truly say to yourself, ah, this is a heavy game. And normally, you'd be right. However, this is forbidden games we're talking about, and their whole deal is bringing game design and concepts from the capital B board gaming world and making them accessible to everyone. When viewing Mosaic through that lens, it's hard to argue with the design. Yes, as mentioned earlier, there are eight actions to choose from on your turn, but they each open very different gates in the game. Generally speaking, you'll know easily which one you want to take, and even gamers new to this weight class can easily find themselves starting to think two or three moves ahead, which one of my testing crew found very exciting. It's this distillation of ideas down to their purest form, but still including everything a Civ game wants, that Mosaic finds its real footing. Civ games can awfully be obtuse and fiddly affairs, but Forbidden injects their secret sauce into Mosaic, making it both easy to understand and fast-paced without sacrificing strategy. What works here is exactly what you want in a game on your table. Clear intent, sound design, not sound design, that's something else, and tight, competitive gameplay. The real magic for me in this one is the fact that it plays up to six players without extending the two hour playtime by much, if at all. I know, I know, that sounds ridiculous, but remember, the game's built-in timer is the hidden scoring card in each of the decks, so it stands to reason that it doesn't matter how many different players are diving through them, only that cards keep getting bought and revealed. In addition, Keep in mind that building cities, towns, and ports all give you resources from the board, which accelerates your building and population, which spirals into more and more cards being bought and built, and eventually, Bob's your uncle. What doesn't work? Here's where the preview nature of this game starts to make me equivocate a little bit. After my first lap through Mosaic, our group kept notes on what bugged us during gameplay and what we thought would help, and some concerns about the card art. I emailed these concerns to the designer and the team at Forbidden, and no less than a day later got a detailed response back saying that they agreed with nearly all of what we found, and while some they already knew about and were planning to fix, there were others that they'd get right on top of. Already the updates to the game address a lot of our concerns, so they're not really worth getting into here. I have a feeling that the core gameplay, what I really liked about Mosaic, isn't going anywhere, but the game you get is going to feel a lot less cumbersome. A couple things to keep in mind as you're making the decision on this one. This isn't a war game. There are military units, but there's no direct combat in the game version I have. These military units don't really do anything that you'd normally associate with combat units in a game, save for help you secure influence over a region. If you're looking for a Civ game that has direct player interaction or fighting, this isn't it. The player interaction is going to be limited to securing resources, cards, and board space before your table mates can. Also, the Wonders, Golden Age, and Civilization achievements are a little fiddly for my tastes. The Wonders each have a different requirement to build, and they have to be face up for you to see them. While the Golden Age is all trigger off of you having six symbols of one of the various resources, be it ideas, military, culture, etc., so that once you hit six, you can look for the one you've earned, the Wonders and Civ achievements are, well, not random, but not easily guessed. You really need to be able to see all of them in order to aim your gameplay towards them, and that means even more precious table space. I really did enjoy my time with Mosaic, and I think that it neatly hits the mark of being an intro game for players looking to get into heavier plays. I know that seems silly given what you can see here in the two hour clock on the box, but truly, the game plays so quickly that you'll hardly notice the playtime. Honestly, even with five or six players, I can't imagine having more than a couple minutes downtime between turns, and even then, you'll sometimes want more than that to determine what your absolute best move is. Mosaic is worth a very serious look if the concept seems at all interesting to you. Mosaic forges some new ground for the developer, though not for the designer, and does so admirably, with the noted missteps hopefully being resolved before it hits your table. This is one that I'm very much looking forward to seeing in the finished state. Let's go through our checklist before I give you my final thoughts. In the box, rulebook clear and non-gender pronouns. My preview rulebook is cleared of gendered language, but is just a printout with no art or illustrations. My issue won't be yours though, and I've never met a forbidden rulebook I didn't like. Hopefully there'll be a finished rulebook for people to look at by the end of the Kickstarter campaign. Iconography clear. 
Yes. The needed production goods on the cards are clear and different enough from each other that you won't have any confusion on what is needed to build the cards you see. There's a little ambiguousness on the leader cards as to when you get what benefits, but once you refer to the rulebook's appendices once or twice, it should be easy for future plays. Packaging well done. Gosh, I hope so. As I mentioned, we eschewed the unboxing for this video because of the preview nature of the box and components. Again, I'm relying on Forbidden's track record here, as the boxes for both Raccoon Tycoon and Railroad Rivals were very good. The updates provided thus far in their crowdfunding campaign make it clear that they're aiming to get everything neatly stored in what will certainly be a very large box, and then even more in the even bigger box. On the table, good representation. Civilization-style games can be tricky, as we're dealing with a very diverse time and location on Earth, and depending on the scope of the game, that time could be several centuries. If you're making a Civ game and you're not paying attention to diversity, then what are you even doing? The mosaic that I have here is going to be very different from the one you get, so I'll simply say this. I had some concerns with some art pieces and some of the leaders being questionable, and brought those concerns directly to the designer. They were met with appreciation, understanding, and a promise to do better. An unprompted follow-up email informed me that new art assets had been requested, and they were taking another look at the art overall with proper representation in mind. Component quality. Given the preview nature of my game, I'm withholding judgment on this as well. Not to sound like a broken record, but the Kickstarter updates look great as more and more finished content gets revealed, and I'm a sucker for metal coins, which are an option here. Replay value, very high. With games reliably clocking in at the two hour mark, not including setup or explanation, there's plenty to do and try during your time at the table. While I wouldn't call this a point salad game, as there's not a wide selection of ways to earn points, the ways you gain influence and leverage your leader are varied and interesting enough to warrant investigating multiple strategies over different plays. Fun to lose. Overall, yes. While it is possible for new players to get lost in the game, there are several points throughout that will give everyone at the table an idea of where they stand and how everyone else is getting points. Strategies develop quickly, and there's usually plenty of time to pivot and catch up. Mosaic, for me, is a bit of an odd one. Every time I mention something that I don't like about it, I see an update or get a note from the designer that tells me they're aware of it and are working on it. From the massive player boards being streamlined to the wonky military units and their diminished purpose in the game, the table experience seems like it's still in flux. As I mentioned earlier, while the gameplay is solid and provides some very strategic moments, the game itself seemed like it would sometimes get in my way, and it sounds like that's not going to be an excuse for very much longer which is such an exciting prospect for me. I'm Nicholas, reminding you to help protect the game population. Always leave your cards. Hey everyone, if you liked our video, please hit that sub button and ring that bell for notifications. Check out all of our other offerings at goodluckhighfive.com and please consider becoming a patron of the channel over at patreon.com slash glhfmagic. It helps us keep making reviews, videos, podcasts, and you can become a member for any dollar amount. We're also always looking for new games to review. You can reach us at glhfmagic at gmail.com. You can follow me, Captain N, the Game Master, at CaptainNGM on Twitter and Instagram, and follow the channel at glhfmagic. Remember, please shop at your local game store whenever possible. Until next time, I'm Nicholas, and good luck. High five.